What's up, what's up? I'm about to show you all how to build a freaking mother freaking rocket. Hybrid rocket motor. I'm gonna show you some of the things that you need and what you don't need. Okay, the first part you're gonna wanna make is the combustion chamber. This guy is gonna hold your propellant. So you're gonna have the back section and the front section. Depending on how you wanna make it, you can weld whatever you want on it to make it work or whatnot. But just make sure you want, you get something that's going to hold your propellant, and you want a nozzle section and a back section. It's 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 necessary to have each side come off. And the second piece you're going to want to make is the back cap. Now this one I just welded up together right here. As you can see, I got a, a a 90 degree elbow piece right there, and this is the back cap, obviously. And I got myself a you know a plumbing pipe welded onto the back cap right there I drilled a hole directly in the middle of this back cap this is obviously in the plumbing section of Home Depot some of the things that you can get at Home Depot will work just not the propellant so um, yeah you can see right here obviously it's in the center and you're gonna you're gonna want to give it some distance right here you don't want it you don't want to have a, a hose connected to the back cap super close you know why because it gets really really hot and you don't want to melt that so the third major thing you want to get done the nozzle so as you can see I constructed this with the lathe machine I don't know if you all have a lathe machine and stuff but it helps you know but if you don't you could just always just weld yourself some ghetto ass nozzle together but make sure that you can direct the flow into a small hole don't make it too small you know like if you want you can get my dimensions but obviously you can see there's a taper that goes out on the front and a taper that goes in so it's like literally like like that so and then here it is you want to make sure that you can get that nozzle pretty much on that combustion chamber because without the nozzle you don't have thrust you're just gonna be like nothing you want to direct that flow go you know like freaking make that shit freaking mm, you know restricted so you, you can this freaking engine is gonna you know that way you know you want to make sure you, you know you you want to constrict it but not like over constrict it but don't don't make the hole too big because obviously you're just gonna make a flamethrower and you don't want a flamethrower do you you want a freaking rocket so let's do this right all right now it's time to talk about your fuel your propellant what are you gonna use I'm gonna show you something you can buy a hundred pounds of this freaking shit for only forty dollars freaking hot mott roofing tar this is the kind of shit that you see people on the roof freaking spreading and like melting that shit and it's all steaming on the top and smells like freaking tar yeah that shit you want that now your oxidizer oxygen you want oxygen it's cheap you can get this i got this for ten dollars i can refill this for ten bucks you know, or fifteen dollars, depending on where you go fill it up. Every gas place is not created equal. But yeah, I got this. I can get this filled for like ten dollars. Not bad, you know. And this is just a little bottle. You see, you can go get yourself some nitrous oxide if you want, but that shit's expensive. All right, it's time to melt that tar and put it in this combustion chamber. How are we gonna do that? So I came up with this. This thing I put together. This is what you want. You don't want to pour straight freaking tar in here and not have a, a core spot for the oxygen to flow through and burn the tar from the inside out. You want to create a core bar like this. This is for pouring purposes. Now I got it all hooked up in there, ready to pour. As you can see, I got wax paper out here. Why do I have wax paper? Well, because when you pour this tar in here and it's freaking, you know, hot, okay, and when you set it to dry and it hardens, how are you gonna get this core bar out? This freaking thing gets stuck. I, I've even tried putting WD-40 on there before. That does not work, or any kind of oil or lubricant. So what I find works better than anything for now is wax paper, and I just wrap it. Up, I get overlap it about uh, four times, and then I glue it, and then I put electrical tape around it to hold it, and then I put, um, as you can see, lock tape um, to seal it, just so when you have it sit here. The Teflon tape prevents the, the um, tar from leaking out because literally it is as thin as water. When it's hot and molten, it is as thin as water, literally a liquid like water. So you want to make sure that thing is sealed. And then you want to set this up as vertical as you can get it. And then you're ready to pour. Now 
now you're gonna get yourself a your little chiquito uh, burner this is all you really need this thing will heat up this entire pot and melt all that tar you don't even need to have this huge ass freaking um, pot if you don't have if, if you have a smaller one in hand that's good but just have a little extra on hand just just in case you don't have enough all right as you can see the tar is almost done and ready to pour let him sit and cool off and it'll harden in there Packed with fuel now. Uh, this is what you're gonna do. One last thing right here with the nozzle. After you just fill it up with fuel and it's cooled down and hardened in there, as you can see, it's freaking hard. I'm using this form of gasket stuff. Much exhaust and pressure is gonna be coming out of that nozzle. A lot of it's gonna be releasing out of here, and you don't want that. So just try to do yourself a favor and, and put some like gasket, form of gasket material on here. Or you can cut yourself some actual gasket and just put it on there. Now you're going to get yourself some wood and make yourself a platform. And I glued myself a freaking scale on the back of this 2x4 structure that I made. And these 45 degree angle braces right there. Check it out. And when I push pressure on it. go you can see this thing slides Yeah, I got to manage to get 130 pounds of thrust on the second run. The first the first run you saw was only 60 pounds. So, you guys want to watch more videos? Please subscribe. Thank you.